Sony, I'm just trying to help. Okay, so I'm trying to get out of the funk that I've been in in terms of just, you know, every everything has been ticking me off lately. And, and I kind of want to apologize for that. Uh, I can't guarantee it's going to change because my reactions to stuff, if stuff comes out that ticks me off, that's what's going to happen. But um, I want to kind of thank uh, one of the commenters on my last video about the Venom movie that's happening. And that's uh, DBZ. Uh, 2002. Uh, now, he basically said something that sort of set my the wheel spinning in my head. So here, uh, going off of that initial seed of inspiration, here are my suggestions to Sony for five movies related to Spider-Man that they could, and in my opinion, should make before trying to do a Venom solo movie. Let's get right into it. Number one, Silk. Now, Silk is a fairly recent creation. She's only been around for a couple years, and sort of the whole idea with her was that the spider that bit Peter and gave him uh, all his powers then kind of crawled away, and before it died, it also bit somebody else. It bit another student by the name of Cindy Moon. She got powers similar to, but slightly different from Peter's, and she fights crime under the, the name of Silk. So what you've got basically right there is just female Spider-Man. And as far as standalone spin-offs go, not a horrible idea. Now, this is one that it's actually not impossible that we would get, although they pr probably wouldn't be sort of a standalone, unconnected thing the way it looks like the Venom movie that they're do. And the reason I say that is the character Cindy Moon, somebody has been cast and is being listed uh, in the new Spider-Man Homecoming as Cindy Moon. Now, that does not mean they are going to introduce Silk. It could just be an Easter egg for those who are aware of her and, you know, her actual identity. But it does also see the possibility that if they wanted to, she's already there. Moving up the list, my number four choice, Spider-Man Noir. Now, this is Spider-Man looking dark, looking... I mean, the, the title says it all. Spider-Man Noir, Noir means black, but also, of course, film noir and sort of those old sort of grizzled, you know, detective kind of stories, you know, Humphrey Bogart, the Maltese Falcon kind of thing. So you've got Spider-Man, this really cool, just black look in this sort of 1930s setting. He's, he's fighting against Nazis. He uses a gun. It's just a fundamentally different feel to Spider-Man, but it's still Spider-Man, but it's just the change of that setting. When you move the character to a different setting, the character is going to change because if he comes from a different place, he's going to be a little bit of a different person. And Spider-Man Noir has been a surprisingly interesting and enjoyable take on the thing. From something that could have just been like a random, uh, you know, a what if, a, a completely one-off thing. But no, nah, it's it's yielded some some fun stories. Nothing of uh, any, I think, real meat or substance. But you know what? It, it I think one of the things that they could do if they're really, if they're going to just be tossing out Spider-Man. Because let, let us not forget that Sony Animation is doing a Spider-Man movie as well using Miles Morales. So they aren't opposed to having multiple iterations of Spider-Man. And I say, if you're going to do that, let's have really different ones. Spider-Man Noir is a good way to go with that. My number third pick, Black Cat. Felicia Hardy. Oh, she's a great character and she's a lot of fun. Now, ideally, I would prefer her to actually show up in a Spider-Man movie proper because her dynamic with Spider-Man is really interesting as a potential love interest because she has a thing for Spider-Man. She doesn't really care for Peter. And I've always found that to be very interesting and fun. And she's a very fun character. I mean, she is she's very much and very deliberately Marvel's answer to Catwoman, which, of course, is going to make some people go, oh, the Catwoman movie. Uh, but I mean, we can all agree that was a horrible version of like the anti-hero cat burglar, you know, heroin kind of thing. So don't feel the need to compare to that because that was a bad version of that. Just because you make another movie that has that kind of character does not mean it also must be bad. I think you can have her, you can you could have a really fun heist movie, have her get in over her head, maybe with the mob or maybe with some, you know, other villain. Heck, use it as a chance to, to bring in one of the one of the big mob bosses that isn't Kingpin because Marvel's using him, but like somebody like Silvermane or Tombstone. Have her get on the wrong side of them or, or like she's, she's trying to, you know, pay off a debt to those kinds of guys and it could be like that that one last job and then i'm out kind of movie but with a really cool looking character and the, with these claws and this and the silver and the you know the white hair and like i i'd have fun choice number two spider gwen 
Hey, why not? First of all, the look is great. I mean, before I knew anything about this character, knew whether or not she was any good, I saw that look for the first time and I went, that's a cool look. I like that a lot. And she is fun and interesting anyways. If, if you don't know who she is, she comes from an alternate dimension where Gwen Stacy was bitten by the, by the spider instead of Peter Parker. So instead of becoming a martyr, she becomes a superhero. And given how good and fun and charismatic Emma Stone is, I would almost say it's worth going whole hog alternate dimension and bringing her back to play this part. I think, I mean, she was she was great as Gwen. She was one of the highlights of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. But even if you didn't bring her back, again, we get a little bit of that, that female Spider-Man thing that we would have with Silk, but there's something just about, the, there's something triumphant about a character who's, identity in pop culture is as a victim getting to be the hero. And I think there's a nice meta feel to that, which is the reason that I would put Spider-Gwen over Silk, even though in some ways they're a similar gimmick. They were a female with Spider-Man's powers, but there's there's just something a little little bit extra about the baggage involved with the Gwen Stacy name that I think is a positive thing um, when doing Spider-Gwen as a character. And my top choice, and this is the one actually that, that DBZ2002 uh, themselves brought up and it made me go, oh yeah, and I've, I've thought for a long time this would be a great idea and if Sony really wants to commit to these alternate and disconnected from the MCU things that are related to Spider-Man just so they can milk the heck out of this license, Spider-Man 2099, man, come on! This is one I have a lot of affection for because it came out right when I started getting into comics and I was on the ground floor. I bought the first issue and I mean, I've got a lot of first issues from the 90s because they were making a lot of first issues of a lot of stuff, but it was one of the few I stuck with for a while and it's good and I love the characterization. I love Miguel O'Hara. I love the ways in which he's similar to Peter in terms of being, you know, quippy and, and quick-witted and having a scientific mind, but I also like the ways he differs. He's harsher. He doesn't have the Uncle Ben backstory, so he doesn't have the same weight of responsibility, especially in those early days, and he doesn't value human life quite to the same extent that Peter does. It makes for an interesting contrast. I, I also like the ways in which his power set differs. Yes, he climbs walls, but rather than just his fingers stick, he's got these little, these little claws that jut out that are really really dangerous. I mean, it's like he's got tiny little Wolverine claws on the tips of his fingers. I like the look. I like the world. It's a Blade Runner-esque type world, and I always like those kinds of settings. It's a little less... It, it, it would be like... Imagine the Blade Runner universe uh, in the daytime when it wasn't raining. That's kind of the feel of the 2099 world, and I've always enjoyed that setting. I think it's a lot of fun, and I think Miguel O'Hara as a character is a lot of fun, and I think a lot of the villains that they update... I thought Vulture 20 99 was a lot of fun. I thought his AI assistant was a lot of fun. There's just a lot that I love about that world and that character, and I think it would be a really great way for if Sony, if Sony's going to insist on milking this property, here's something that I think makes a heck of a lot more sense as a standalone disconnected from the MCU than doing Venom does. So those are my choices for five movies that Sony should be making instead of Venom. But those are my thoughts. What about you? Are there any alternate versions of Spider-Man or spin-off characters from Spider-Man that you think could sustain their own movie aside from Venom, because obviously that's already happening. Whatever they are for you or your thoughts on the ones I already picked, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks, give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher, and until next time, this council is adjourned.